Research firm Omida has released an estimate for the bill of materials. Or Omdia, bomb but costs. yeah, don't worry about it. Omdia. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a nope, stupid, that is correct. Stupid name, but um, it's probably better than Floatplane. I like Omida. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely better than Floatplane. Uh, Research estimate. firm Floatplane. The <laughs> fuck is that? What is that name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> As for the bill of materials for Apple Vision Pro, uh, placing the cost of its various materials and components at fifteen hundred and forty-two dollars. Notably, this does not include costs associated with market uh, marketing. Wow, I can speak uh, packaging or research and development, which is going to be very substantial. To be clear, this is something that people forget about constantly. I don't know why. Uh, meaning that it is not possible to determine Apple's per unit profit margin with the information listed. And it never is, unless you happen to work at Apple and know the exact profit margin. Even then, it's kind of hard and it's technically a little bit of a guess. Yeah. Uh, the biggest single contributor to the bomb, is, or the bill of materials, is the micro OLED internal displays, which are awesome. So it makes sense, adding that in wow. there, uh, which costs $228 per eye. I wonder how that compares to the price of gold, because I bet <laughs> they don't weigh much. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. The combined costs for all of the Vision Pro's displays make up around 35% of its bill of materials. For context, wow. the PSVR 2's OLED panel is 30% of its bomb, and the Quest 2's LCD panel is only 18% of its bomb. Apple has declined to discuss the exact breakdown behind the Vision Pro's price, but they have emphasized the cost of R&D and claim that 5,000 different patents were used in its design. The main display is $456 alone. Wow. Whoa. That's, that's a lot. Yeah. It's a really wicked display, so it makes sense. Yeah, but, but a good rule of thumb is that whatever the bill of materials cost is, you're probably looking at about double. At least. By the time it makes it to retail, because yeah. you've got to account for, I mean... Even even aside from the things that Luke already listed, you know, there's uh, there's 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 middlemen. Even if that middleman is your own middleman, so let's say it Apple's Apple's middleman is an Apple store. Yeah, does it pay rent? I mean, if it wants to keep that nice does location in the mall, it sure does. <laughs> if it wants to keep them employed. It sure does. Does it have to deal with shrink? Does it have to deal with cleaning expense? I'd, so just because a middleman also has the name Apple doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't add cost, that it, that it doesn't eat are away there, at your margin. Are there any failures in manufacturing at all? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's... Uh, Certainly. That's something that may be factored into be. these bill of material costs, though, because know, though. if the cost of a, of a Sony Semiconductor Micro OLED display is $228, that's probably once the failed ones have been okay. yielded out. I didn't know that's how bomb However, was. that doesn't necessarily mean, yeah, so generally your bill of materials is the cost of good ones. Okay. However, that doesn't mean that none of those good ones are broken in assembly. Right. They could still get returned. They could that be can lemons, happen. whatever else. That can happen. I You're feel like that's not as common these days, but that, yeah. With the amount of automation that they have in product manufacturing these days, yeah, it would be less common, but it wouldn't be unheard of for something to go wrong on the assembly line and for some of these to ultimately not pass spec. Now, in many cases, you can push that back on the manufacturer. You can go, hey, Sony, here's your pallet of crappy displays that didn't make the cut when we were assembling them. And if you're Apple, you probably have the like penis to swing around to go, uh, by the way, here's a bill for us to take them apart and ship them back to you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But um, <clears throat> that's absolutely something that can happen. And it, and it, someone has to do that. And I think that's something a lot of people kind of take for granted is every thing. Someone has to, like move it every single time it moves someone has to look at it every single time something changes about it to make sure that everything's going well and in some cases it is a machine doing that well guess what somebody has to build that machine somebody has to maintain it there's costs everywhere sorry yeah. but there, so some of these things are are like i know the screen is the main display is 456 bucks but like man nothing was really cheaped out on structural member 
just the middle frame and stuff, $120. That doesn't even surprise me that much. Like it's metal. It's, it's metal. Yeah. And it's the, the kind of CNC <laughs> that you are... To, it's just like I, I understand that but then you see it on paper and it's like yeah you know this was debated heavily and they decided yeah let's go with this expensive 120 dollar at their cost metal frame uh kumo star in float plane chat says my glass lenses actually shatter at a rate of 40 percent of the time when they thin them wow. yeah poor product yields are absolutely something that is built into the cost of premium or niche or just or, or difficult to manufacture products um, a perfect example of that is why much much larger tvs are so much more expensive than smaller ones you could have a tv that is twice the size as another tv but it'll be four times the cost I'm trying because to get that panel all of it perfect with nothing wrong with it is way more difficult yeah. than cutting around a bad section and making two smaller ones. It's just, it's so much harder. It requires bigger machinery to manipulate it around as you're working on it. It's just everything is bigger and everything's more challenging and someone has to develop the processes for this. By the way, I, typical Twitch, uh, back to our last topic. Sorry, Linus, you're defending the bad guys here. Did, did any part of any of that sound like a defense? Come on, people. What? The HDMI forum thing. How did you win? Where I was talking about HDCP being effective. Oh. Oh. I didn't say they're good guys. I just said that what they're doing is working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I said they're not as stupid as you might think they are. Discussion question is, does this kind of cost breakdown make sense for the Vision Pro? Um, what it is and what it can do. The $3,500 price tag, is it really all that shocking giving its component parts? I no. Mean, that's the thing is I, I talked about this in my <laughs> unboxing. I said, guys, it's expensive. Yes. Is it overpriced? No. No. If anything, I'm looking at this bomb We're cost. I'm going. You, that you should buy it either, just to be super clear. <laughs> not even a little. Our review is coming very soon. In fact, I think it's uh, coming out tomorrow. Nice. But looking at this bomb cost, the retail price totally makes sense. The to price me. is not higher. It's actually, I think, unchar- uncharacteristically low for Apple. I think it's pretty aggressive. Yeah. Um, and. I know that's going to sound pretty crazy to some people. There's a lot of people who just really hate Apple and anything that they do is bad because it's Apple who did it. But do you imagine for a second that, uh, you know, let's say Microsoft is making less margin on Azure. <laughs> like, what, what, how do you think you, if you if you look, look at it, look at NVIDIA's H100s right now. Apple is a publicly <laughs> traded company. You can get a rough idea of what their profit margins are anytime you want. Yeah. And then you can compare it to companies like Oracle okay? <laughs> or NVIDIA. <laughs> it's like they're, they're not that far out there. Yeah. And so, yeah, is the Vision Pro a really expensive product? Sure. Yeah, of course it is. But like, I don't know. Do you have any nice kicks? Do you have any <laughs> idea how much fucking money they made on those? <laughs> like, come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, clothing is like historically pretty notorious for this. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And and to be clear, clothing has very real costs. You know, back to my point, this totally. happens to be clothing that we're going to talk about a little bit later on the show, new clothing. Or you want to package it in a way that isn't bad for the planet, that's going to cost more. Yeah, that'll cost you. Do you want to ship it Cause, at all? Because even though, even though this paper might cost exactly the same as some plastic, it doesn't, it costs more, but it could cost exactly the same. You still have to pay for someone to go and source it because this particular factory only had plastic packaging on hand. Now they have to store that paper that's just for special snowflake us and then they have to have a workflow for you know changing the production line so that instead of plastic at the end it has paper at the end whenever they're working on stuff for us like is the failure rate the same everything adds up adds up adds up adds up adds up and so yeah i said i said it already but i'll say it again um it's not overpriced yeah it's expensive yes there are elements of it that are overpriced the fact that Apple charges so much for a storage upgrade on something that you are already paying them to be a beta tester for yeah. is egregious to me. <laughs> but the device itself, the base model device itself, no, it's not overpriced. And given the R&D and all the other stuff involved with it. If Apple, you would complain if Apple didn't pay the engineers who developed it. Yeah. 
That would be a huge scandal. That would be a huge scandal. Or if you worked them too hard or too long or because whatever. you're trying to save money. Or whatever. Yeah. So then when Apple kind of goes, yeah, turns out R&D costs money, so we're going to somewhere. we're gonna have to charge money for our products, you can't complain then. You, you, can't, you don't get to have it both ways. I had a conversation with someone recently uh, where we had a discussion about how your, your employment to a certain degree, if you, if you are making things, um, and I've had this discussion with a, a few people a number of times, but there was just one that was very recent. But if you're, if you're, if you make things, your employment is essentially selling your own company, the things that you make. So you can kind of boil it down to like, okay, I made widget X. It took me two months. The cost of the company for widget X was my costs, which is my salary plus my, you know, benefits and whatever um, government fee things there are on top of that. And then the company's the job of hours is to take that thing and make more money and off make of more it. money off of it. And if they don't, then then I guess you weren't a very good salesman. Yeah. Um, and you go bye bye. Yeah, pretty much. And you or can reassigned or whatever. And else. you can be unhappy about it. Um, you know, it's one of those things where I'm not going to say, hmm, you complain about capitalism and yet you participate you in it. You engage in this? <laughs> 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 but that's... That's how the wheel currently turns. For better or for worse, how it's currently working. Yeah. Train dot wave. <laughs> <laughs> yep. See, that's the thing. Um we can't it turns out have a film studio in a residential neighborhood we tried that <laughs> zoning uh you get kicked out yeah unfortunately so it's a whole thing it was nice while we were there and the vast majority of the industrial land in the vancouver area is next to train tracks where you know people don't want to live uh so we just have to deal with that <laughs> it's pretty cool it is what it is yeah, yeah. 